Imagine being able to replicate any movie aesthetic and generate any scene you want all by using an already established style code. Doesn't matter if it's a rubber hose animation or GTA or Wes Anderson aesthetic or Tim Burton style or arcane animation, whatever. In case that wasn't crystal clear, you can copy any art style known to man and then you can generate them in mid-journey without lifting a finger. Now, some advanced users might say, but Evan, I already know how to use SREF and I get how mood boards work. And to that, I say, regardless of how much you already know or don't know, we're about to take things to a whole new level. If you're tired of generic AI art styles and want to create truly unique aesthetics that stand out, what I'm about to share with you, you won't find this anywhere else, as far as I know. First of all, SREF doesn't really work as well as intended. If you use an image for style reference, Midjourney doesn't just copy the style, it pulls in the actual contents of the image, even when you don't want it to. So yeah, we're not doing that. Instead, we're using Midjourney's mood board feature, which actually lets you copy any style by simply uploading a collection of images. Pretty good so far? Well, here's the problem. Manually collecting images one by one is a massive pain, and most people don't have the time or patience for that. Wouldn't it be way more convenient if someone had already done the work and compiled an entire library of mood boards for different aesthetics? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm offering. Click the Google links in the description to access my mood board library. As you can see, I've compiled some of the most unique cinematic styles ever made. If you want to replicate a style, just copy the code. For example, let's say I want Rick and Morty's art style. I paste it into Midjourney, type in my prompt, and boom! And though, very important, more often than not, it's best to mention the art style directly in your text prompt to maximize the mood board style transfer. You'll see why in a second. For example, cartoon if it's a cartoon, since Rick and Morty is a cartoon, adding the keyword in the beginning makes the generated image capture the aesthetic more. And as you can see, the results look straight out of the show. Now let's try Studio Ghibli. What's impressive here is that even with a long, complex prompt, the mood board keeps the style consistent. The only detail that wasn't captured as well here is the mist, but that's probably because there's a lot going on in the scene. Same thing with Wes Anderson. This one is specifically pulled from screenshots of Asteroid City. Now here's something important. The more details you specify, or the more complex your scene is, the more likely you'll get weird generations. But even with a long prompt, it's still working pretty well. So text prompts alone are powerful, but without the mood board code, this is what you'd get. It looks great, but if you're aiming for accuracy, this is what real Panavision looks like. Same with Ghibli. This version leans more toward modern anime than an actual classic aesthetic. And again with Wes Anderson, this one gets the color palette but misses the full Asteroid City look. Over time, I'll be adding more art styles, so feel free to bookmark it for later. Now, there are three levels to this. What you just saw was level 1, which is the most effortless way to do it. But what if you need a specific style that isn't in my library? That's where level 2 comes in, where I'll show you how to create your own mood board, also without lifting a finger. Well, maybe just a pinky. So first, let's jump into Midjourney and click on Personalize, hit Create Mood Board, and then name it. Now, to build a solid mood board, you'll want to gather screenshots and compile them into a single folder before uploading them to Midjourney. There are tons of resources for this online. For movies, my go-to is film-grab.com. I'll also be sharing one for anime in a second. Just search for any movie title, you'll find at least 50 high quality screen grabs ready to download. Just click the download button on the bottom right. Now, how many images do you actually need? 50 are usually enough to create a good art style model, but more images provide better flexibility, as more data allows Midjourney to understand the style. That's why I usually opt for 300 to 500 images, which works better across different compositions and prompts. So in my case, I'm downloading another Tim Burton aesthetic to expand the dataset. But here's the thing, quality over quantity. 50 high quality images work better than 500 low quality ones. If your dataset is filled with blurry, inconsistent, or off-style images, your generations are likely going to suffer for it. Once you have all your screenshots in one folder, just drag them onto your mood board, and that's it. The mood board is, is instantly usable. If you want to capture anime aesthetics, another great resource is AnimeScreens4K.com. They've got a massive library of high-resolution screenshots from the most popular anime, and they're all downloadable through Google Drive folders. Speaking of which, one must-try trick is searching for Google Drive folders directly on the web. 
that's how I get most of my movie and anime screenshots. And trust me, you'd be surprised how many people share entire folders of high quality frames on Reddit, forums, and other sites. Now that your mood board is set up, using it is easy. Just click use mood board, grab the code, and type in your prompt. And there you go! Not the best generation, but it certainly has that creepy gothic atmosphere that Burton is known for. If we generate the same prompt without the mood board, it looks like a regular stop motion picture. Now, the next level is optional because, well, level 2 already lets you create mood boards for almost every cinematic style. But for a few folks, nearly all doesn't really cut it. Level 3 takes it even further. You can capture screenshots from virtually any film using a custom software I made. This one-click app automatically takes screenshots from a video file at set intervals. For example, let's say I want to pull 500 screenshots from the classic animated film Heavy Metal. First, click Browse Video and select the file. Then, set the output folder where the images will be saved. The interval section determines how often a frame is captured. I usually set it to every 10 seconds, and from there, the app does the rest, automatically grabbing the screenshots for you. I manually delete the bad frames, the ones with subtitles, text overlays, or anything that doesn't really reflect the aesthetic. Another reason this is optional is that I'm asking $6 for access to the app. Wait, before you click away, I know some of you hate paying for stuff, but hey, I gotta eat. And honestly, at this price, it's a steal because besides the tool, you're also getting lifetime access to my future AI filmmaking course and private community. I probably shouldn't even be offering it at this price, but here we are. Links in the description down below. Now, before you go, let me clarify something about the mood boards I've shown. They're super convenient and work really well, but in high-level workflows that demand precise scenes, Midjourney's mood board feature can be a bit limiting in terms of flexibility. Certain poses and activities just work better than others. Let me show you what I mean. For example, in this prompt, I wanted the environment to be in a brightly lit gym with white walls, but the mood board is struggling to depict that. This mostly comes down to A, Midjourney's limitations, and B, the crudeness of the image collection it pulls from. As you can see, the data set here is biased towards scenes with low lighting, which explains why it's difficult to generate scenes that are bright with this mood board. By the way, this has less to do with the steampunk series itself, but the specific screenshots I've collected. To get an extremely flexible art style model that works in any scenario, the data set needs serious refinement, but that's level 4, which is beyond the scope of this video. And who knows, I might even include level 5 in my course at some point. But until then, this is the cheapest ticket to access my inner network. Thank you so much for watching. You have a good one. Bye.